Good morning. Let's stand to our feet. Good to see you today. We're going to do this song that we've done the past few weeks, and I think you'll know it by now. But if you don't, we'll do it again today, so you'll have another chance to learn it. <clears throat> Sing it together. What is our hope in life and death? Christ alone, Christ alone. What is our only confidence that our souls to Him belong? Who hold our days within His hand? What comes apart from His command? What will keep us to the end? The love of Christ in which we stand. Sing this chorus together. Oh, sing. church say amen. Well, it's great to have you here today and to see everybody, see your smiling faces. Let's pray together before we go on. Y'all pray with me. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you are glorified and you live in us. And so God, we ask today, Lord, as we take this time, this special moment, Lord, to worship you together corporately, 
that you would help us to experience your presence. You would fill us with your love and your peace, the joy and the assurance that comes from knowing where our future lies. It's not in our own strength. It's in your perfect hand. Lord, I thank you, God, for every person here, Lord, that you're going to minister to us. You're going to speak to our hearts today. As we hear your words, we pray together. As we worship, Lord, you're going to be glorified. So, Father, we just surrender this time and this moment in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all know this, so let's sing it. <clears throat> Christ is my firm foundation. Everything around me shaking. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. He's never. Through generations.
Nothing I can do to let you down. It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Going through a storm. I know who I am, I know a 
keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, that is who you are. 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 That is who you That Jesus wants you to close, come to Him today, because He is our healer. Amen. He is our miracle worker. Yes. He is here to touch the broken hearts. Yes, Lord. For us to respond to Him. So he's in Arkansas with one of our fellowship churches speaking. He Goodson went with him, and uh, they're just having a great time there at that church. And so he came up to me and asked me, he said, Jeff, you know, i got to get a, a speaker uh, this Sunday. And I said, Bruce, I said, just go, go through your list. So Pastor Bruce got his old index card beside his, uh, his office there at his desk, and they had dust on it. And he just sort of knocked it off and gave it a spin, closed his eyes. And pulled out a name, and it was Bill Slappy. <laughs> Bill Slappy. We're excited he's here. No, we've been just kidding you. He, Bill's been all over. We flew him in from Africa to be here today. Not really, but he's been here a couple weeks. He hasn't been in Africa. But we're excited for him speaking today. And uh, again, thank you for being here at 1030. In your bulletin is your Connect card. If you would fill that out if you're a first-time guest. Put your name and address on there. We would greatly appreciate it. If anyone has a prayer request, flip it over and put it in that box right there. Also, next Saturday night, there's a men's meeting here at the church. So look at your bulletin for more information on that. And here's some more uh, video announcements for you. Good morning, family to all of you here and also to you watching online. The Bible says that God's mercies are new every morning. So let's thank him for this new day and that he is right here with us. He promises to never leave us or forsake us. In Exodus 35 and 36, 
in discussing those who gave to the building of the tabernacle, the words willingly and free will were used. 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says that each man should give what he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. This doesn't mean that we can choose not to give. There is a regular giving that we discussed last week. Then there is additional giving that we are blessed to volunteer for. As your heart is moved, give voluntarily above and beyond your regular giving. Lastly, 2 Corinthians 8.4 says that the Macedonians urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service. In a world of commercials, organizations, and causes that urgently plead with us to give to their cause, Christians are earmarked by urgently pleading for the opportunity to give generously into the kingdom. We only have two more weeks of Wednesday night impact classes. I really can't believe time is flying by so fast. These classes have been amazing, and if you missed it this time around, be sure to catch one next time. Just a reminder that the Grace Climb Food drive through is still going strong Monday through Thursday, 1 to 4, right here at Liberty Church. If you or someone you know needs a little help with groceries, please don't hesitate to come and be blessed. You not only will get a box of food, but you will also have someone pray for you. That's all the announcements we have for today. Now let's focus our attention on the Word of God. It's going to be good. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Susan told me not to wear the hat. Um, I, I, I had on my African, and then, be, and then Susan said, no, no, no. So anyway, um, y'all are getting the benefit of this is the second thing I, well, actually, I think I had on a couple of shirts that she wanted me to, um, to wear. But anyway, thank God that I have a wife that helps me. Uh, <laughs> My name is Bill Slappy, and, uh, and so um, I am a businessman slash missionary, and I feel called to take the gospel to the business community here in Alabama and now around the world, and so I get to do that, and it's a lot, a lot of fun. Uh, and the Lord has just continued to open up amazing doors for me, and now I'm involved in, you know, here, here's something, another tidbit you might know of, but, but the Lord has allowed me to be involved in engaging over 80 different language groups uh, around the world. Isn't that just amazing how I'm just like pinching myself going like, really, God? That is so, and if he had told me that years ago, I would have said, no way, impossible. Um, so some of y'all already know this, but I'm going to say it again, that my goal in life, you know, is to die and go to heaven and take as many people with me as possible while having as much extreme fun as I can possibly have. <laughs> so that is what my, my life is about. And, uh, and I, uh, that brings me to the beginning of my story, which is Hebrews chapter 11. Um, it says that if it, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And we must believe that he is, and then he is a rewarder of those who seek him. So early in my life, I was like, I'm a businessman, and that word reward, I'm like, okay, God, you've got my attention. Okay, uh, today though, and you may not necessarily want to do and be all the thing, be involved in all the things that I'm doing, but God has called each of y'all for a purpose, and so, and I'm here to tell you that what you believe matters. Okay, what you believe, if 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 you believe that you can then you will listen to the people and the things that say you can. And if you believe that you can't, then you will listen to the things that tell you you can't. I mean, literally speaking, I believe that we're living in a self-fulfilling prophecy, okay? Because what we believe governs everything, okay? Now, let me start off by saying this about belief, you know, in this sense. Okay, first of all, through time, we develop these filters in life, okay? But we're, we're all about, there's two things that we all want to know. The first thing is, am I seen and heard and valued, okay? 
That's what we, all, we all want that. We all, we all want to know, when I say something, does it matter? Do people see me? Okay. Am I valued? Okay. And what Christ did on the cross was he answered that question. He says, you have value because I died for you. So, but sometimes that seen and heard part, we grow up in families and communities, and sometimes that can be a little rocky where we don't feel like we've been seen and heard. I grew up in one of those families where my dad regularly told me how stupid I was. Okay, so, and, and so that, was, that was a negative message in my life that happened. Now, so let's put, so that first need, and you could say loved, but that seen, heard, valued, peace. The second part is, why am I here? We're all asking that question. Why am I here? Okay. Um, and, and so as we struggle with that, to figure that out, that's kind of where we begin to develop our belief system. So that starts me on our journey today about what I'm going to talk about, which is ultimately speaking, you know, we choose what we get to believe. Here's the, the verse in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. I have set before you today life and death, blessing and curses. Now choose life. Now, I know you might be thinking door A and door B. But no, it's not that. It's everything that comes into your life, you get to choose is this a blessing or a curse that's before me? Okay? That's what I'm saying to you. So, so you could say, oh, this has come into my life to hurt me and to harm me. Oh, this has come into my life to bless me. And you start trying to make those decisions. You know, we all want to feel safe and secure and yada, yada, yada. But, but there's a whole bunch of stuff that's going to happen in your life you have no control over. Okay? And then you get to choose. Is it a blessing? Is it a curse? Okay, so as you think about how that these things are coming into your life, it's going to impact you. Okay, so let me give you this quick story about that to make this point. Um, and by the way, at this story I'm telling you, um, I felt like I was really, really, really close to God at this point in time. I had come up with this crazy idea about taking people to the movie called The Passion of the Christ. And I was giving and I was selling tickets for $2 a ticket. They were costing me about $8. And I was just getting people to the movie. At the end of the movie, give a presentation, share Christ. Hundreds, hundreds of people came to know Christ. You know, that was an amazing thing. Right after that, I was pretty burned out because that whole process took many months. And I felt the need just to escape, and I went out to Oregon. In Oregon, you can find snow in, in May, okay? And I went skiing out there, and I, on the first day, I tore my ACL, broke my leg. That's a long story, but I want to say this. I was in a wheelchair for six weeks. And this is how I think. Pain is God's megaphone to my ears. So I'm like, well, hey, God, hang on a second. Just tell me what you want me to do. Whisper it, and I'll do it. I mean, that's my relationship with God. And now I'm in this massive, massive pain. I feel like God is screaming. I'm going like, what is going on? Because here's what I believe. Nothing comes into my life without going through God's filter. And so God has allowed this pain in my life. even speak to me he's quiet and I'm like what he's saying I'm with you but there's nothing else going on there's no dialogue going on and I'm just like dying I mean literally dying I mean and you cannot imagine the pain 
of that ACL unless you've done that. And then let me just say this one thing. The therapist people that you go to later, they're sadist because they, <laughs> they, they major in pain and they cause you pain on purpose. And I'm like, I mean, I almost decked this one lady when she was pushing on me, you know, because I said stop and she went more. And, you know, so here's what, so here's the deal. I'm in pain, 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 pain. Six months goes by. Okay, I've been going to work in a wheelchair. I've been trying to sell in a wheelchair. I've been having to need other people and then make matters worse. Susan's upset with me. And she's upset with me because I'm in the wheelchair. And she's upset because I think I did, went and did something stupid, which I guess I did. You know, and, you know, all of this. And so now Susan's not helping me. Allison is. Now, Allison turns, up to be, turns out to be a nurse. And so, but now this, I'm at the beginning. So now Allison's nursing me and helping me. And I got this little pump on my leg, you know, to keep blood clots and things going on. I mean, it's just major. So now God begins to speak to me. Six months goes by and all that pain, all that therapy, and the Lord starts talking. I go like, what is going on? And he said, well, you asked me uh, two prayer requests. You said, first, heal your relationship with Allison. I did not know what was going to happen later in Allison's life. But he said, I did that. So he brought Alice and I together. Later, that became a huge point. And he says, I did that. And I went, well, that's not the way I wanted you to do it. <laughs> but I can see how that I was dependent upon Allison and how that helped. And then he said, and you've been begging me to grow you as a leader for 20 years. I did that, too. And I went, well, okay, I'm a little bit less controlling, more you know, dependent upon other people, and I realized I can't do everything. And so I was like, okay, Lord, you, you have grown me as a leader, and I can see that. And then the next question was, I said, Lord, was there another way? Meaning, skip the pain. And the Holy Spirit said, no. You had to go through the pain to be the leader that I wanted you to be and become. And so you get to choose. Is it a blessing? Is it a curse? Because hard stuff's going to happen to all of us in our life, and we get to choose that. Now, put the circles up there if you would, please. Um, and this is how we all function. At the core of our being is belief. From those belief, we have actions from the actions, we have results and consequences, okay? And this is true for all of us. For example, if I believe my wife is going to cook me dinner, then I don't stop and pick up food on the way, okay? Because I'm believing she's going to do that, okay? Sometimes if I believe that I'm going to be rejected by you, then maybe I start putting up those defenses, you know? But... At the end of the day, what you believe drives your actions. And this is everything. This, this is huge. I mean, I believe that we are living this self-fulfilling prophecy, and it is all day long what I believe is going to happen. And it just blows my mind the things over the years that I believed that God was in that he had called me to do. And then, you know, 5, 10, 20 years later, I go like, Wow. You know, it happened. I mean, just kind of, and oftentimes it's because of this filter. So you got this filter and you believe a certain thing and anything that comes in that agrees with it, you let it in. If it doesn't believe with your belief system, you reject it. We all do it. We all do that constantly. You know, now, you know, in my case, you know, I had God in a box, you know, and, and part of my box was, is, God, I'm going to do what your word says do, and you're going to direct my path. Okay, so that's my beginning foundation of my relationship with Christ was Proverbs 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean upon your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He'll direct your steps. I said, deal. I'm a business guy. Deal. Got it. I am going to do that. I'm going to acknowledge you. You're going to direct my steps. It's all going to work out, and all this crazy stuff happened, but I'm like, you know, Lord, I'm just going to keep acknowledging you, and it is what it is, and the Lord has just gone like boom, boom, boom. So it's been a crazy, fun, fun life, you know, but I'll tell you, the, the wheelchair thing, 
set me back a little bit. It set me back. Because I had God in a box. And God said, I ain't in that box. You know? And, and sometimes he calls this pain in our life. The scriptures actually say, I give life, I heal, I kill. I mean, this is tough. And you read some of the Old Testament, it doesn't make sense. All right, so now let's come back to our belief, and we're going to use the word here, faith, Romans 10, 17. For faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ, okay? And the more of that you can do, the more you're going to get the good stuff inside. I mean, I'm talking about saturating your mind with the word of God, okay? You know, quick story, I was down at Auburn, and I was taking an engineering test, and the thing I always hate about engineering tests is, is that they're, they're what, they weren't multiple choice, and there was only a couple of questions. I think it was a thermodynamics class I was in, those four questions. And these are giant questions, you know. And, and I'm like, and I, and I look at it, and I go, oh, no. I don't know how to do any of these. And I start saying, I'm going to fail, 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 I'm going to fail. And, and I'm shaking and just freaking out, you know, here in that moment, you know, and then the word, the Lord brought the scripture to mind. You know, for those who dwell in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say unto my Lord, my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Who a thousand fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, I have made the Lord my refuge, my God, my Most High. As I began to quote and say that scripture... I mean, the fear left me, and I said, and I looked up and went, well, maybe I can figure out how to do that, and later I figured out how to do that, so, and I, I ended up passing the exam and, you know, doing well, but, but, but I was struck by fear. I was struck by failure, okay? The Scripture and the promises of God's Word are there for us to control our minds so we get to choose what we're going to believe, okay? And even if I had failed that test, I could say, okay, Lord's in control. Maybe he's got another career for me or he's got another path. Just because you, there's failure in what you're doing, that's not a bad thing, okay? Now, what's bad is when you let fear control that, okay? And so this is, what, this is why I say it matters. It matters. Your music matters. <laughs> what you read matters. You know, how you compare yourself, that's why this Facebook stuff is so bad. Okay, I'm not saying it's bad for everybody. But if you're doing any kind of comparison, you know, then it's bad, okay? The movies you watch, it, all this matters. All this input's coming in. And then that input, I don't know if you ever noticed this or not, but you can hang around around people. I mean, I, don't, I generally don't cuss, okay? But in the business world, I can be with somebody for an hour or two, communicating a solution to them, and they cuss, cuss, cuss. And I can leave that person, and a couple hours later, have a cuss word form in my mouth. You know, okay, Lord, just take, take this away. Because we're always being bombarded with the crap of the world. Here's what you, I want you to contemplate here. What if everything you said actually happened? The Bible tells us in Matthew 15, out of the heart the mouth speaks. Now, they were all consumed about the washing and all the food. And Jesus said, Jesus said Look, hang on a minute. It's not the stuff you put into your mouth that defiles you. It's what comes out of your mouth. It's the things that you speak. Okay. And, and, and I'll just tell you this, because I, I regularly mess up, because I got a mouth. And, um, and I was speaking to my wife about something, and she was kind of arguing with me. And I began to try to tell her the right way to do it. And then she said to me, that, that, that sounds mean. And I was like, okay, hang on a minute. Let's do a redo. That's what my wife and I do. We speak to each other wrong. Let's, we're we're first-generation first generation Christians. And, and I was raised with a lot of harshness, you know, with my dad. And Susan had a fair amount of that, too. And so it, sometimes we get into our stuff and we trigger each other. And we just kind of have a rule and say, hey, can we just redo that? So, we, so I, got to, I got a chance to redo that. I'm just telling you, this right here matters. Proverbs 4.22 says, watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the issues of life. Watch over it. You get to choose what you believe. You get to choose how you're impacted. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about hearing from God. 
And I'm telling you to read God's Word. I'm telling you to listen to God's Word. Listen to dramatized Word of God. Study God's Word. Okay, And ultimately speaking, if you want to hear from God, this is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to surrender to Him before He tells you what to do. I just, I, this is just a principle that I have found. God doesn't say, hey, I want you to, you know, here's door A. And you go, you know, I don't want to do that. Well, let's try door B. God doesn't do that. Okay? And he won't tell you door A until you surrender. Yes, Lord, your servant is listening. Yes, Lord, your servant's listening. Okay? And so if you want to hear God speak to you, now sometimes... You can't hear God speak to you because there's an offense. There's a person, I am not going to forgive them, okay? Or I am not going there. You know, I won't do that. I mean, you've got all these things up there, and God ain't talking. He's probably already told you you need to forgive that person. You know, you need to do this or that. And you're saying no, he ain't saying anything else. The callings of God are irrevocable, okay? He didn't take them back and give you another plan, Okay, you might be older, but his plan for your life is his plan for your life. Okay, and he wants you to surrender to him. Romans 10 says this, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised from the dead, you shall be saved. For with a heart a man believes, resulting in righteousness, and with a mouth a man confesses, resulting in salvation. Okay, you... Just go with me here just a minute. But saying Jesus is Lord as much as possible is a good thing. It's a good thing. It moves your world. I see it happen all the time. People will say certain things to me, you know, and I try to say Jesus is Lord in every circumstance I can. One time I wrote Jesus is Lord of this microwave at my office. <laughs> You know, my whole idea was, if I can make him known, confess him, he's going to direct my steps. So I'm writing Jesus, Lord, everywhere. You know, and it's a reminder, it's a sign. You know, but here's what happens. When you say Jesus is Lord, the little demons run away. <laughs> That's the power. There's no other name under heaven by which a man can be saved other than Jesus Christ. So confessing him as Lord, okay, and you're in control, and as you do that, and as you hear yourself say that, it's going to affect what you believe. Okay, and the more you can surrender to him and his lordship. So, I made this deal with God. I'm going to confess you, you know, and I just basically said, you know what, God, here's the deal. You just tell me to speak, and I'll speak. So, that was my deal with God. So, here's this country boy, southern Alabama country boy, Goes to New York to see a friend of mine up there. I'd never been to New York before. Um, they got the J line and the N line and the M line buses that connect with the ZZ line and the JJ. I, I'm like, what? And they got these trains. I mean, to say that I was feeling a bit anxious is an understatement. So here I am in New York. All this stuff's going on. And I sit on this bus. People are standing up everywhere, holding on, crammed in. I'm sitting there. And the Lord says, Speak. And I look next to me, uh, and there's a woman sitting there. And I go like, God, no, 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 no. This is a bad idea. Bad idea. Okay, okay, watch this. She's a woman. I'm a man, all right? Number two, she's older. I'm younger. Okay, okay, hang on a second. She's black. I'm white. There's no way that we have going to connect here. I'm thinking to myself, when I'm sharing the gospel with somebody, I need to, there's what I call connections points of trust. You know, when I go, when I share with people, I'm all the time trying to find connecting points so that there can be trust there so you can hear the message. And that was what I was looking at. I said, there ain't nothing there. Besides that, I'm fixing to get off this bus. I'm going to know when to get off, and I am anxious, and I'm saying, no, God, I, no, bad idea. Well, the Spirit of God in me. I mean, my heart's like, boom, 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 boom. I'm just like that. To... And finally I said, okay, I will show you why this is a bad idea. So I turned to this lady and I said, ma'am, can I ask you a personal question? And she says, I'm sure. And I said, well, if you were to die right now, do you know that you'd go to heaven? She said, I can't believe you said that. 
I woke up this morning, and those are the exact words that I pray. Lord, I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. And I just said, fine. <laughs> Ma'am, okay, If do you believe that sin entered the world through Adam and Eve? Do you believe that Jesus Christ was born a virgin birth? Do you believe that he died on the cross for your sins? Do you believe that he rose again on the third day? I go through the gospel. We ain't got time for nothing else. I'm just asking questions. And she says, yes, 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 yes. And I said, well, ma'am, it looks to me like the only thing left is you surrendering your life and making him your Lord and Savior and inviting him to come into your life and take control. You need to give the steering wheel of your life to him. You stop controlling it. Give it to him. And I said, I know you don't know me, and we just met, but you could actually do that right now on this bus. And that woman bowed her head and started praying out loud. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of the throne of my life. And I'm sitting here like, you have got to be kidding me. Everybody on this bus can hear what we're saying. You know? And, and when, you know, when we said amen, the bus went Ch -ch -ch and stopped. And I looked up, time to get off the bus. Now, figuratively speaking, I felt like I was drenched from head to toe. And I know I was just like exhausted. And I remember getting out of that bus and I just said this. Okay. That made zero sense to me. But you are God, not me. I surrender. I'm going to do it your way. Well, let's you know, put the circles back up there. Um, you can see that what happened was is I believe that I was called. My belief was God had called me. Because he said, confess me in all your ways, and I'll direct your steps. Well, I want him to direct my steps, and so I believe that. So because of that, you know, my actions went into play, and I began to be obedient to the calling that I thought God had called me in the moment. He told me to speak, and I acted. Now, the result was that lady came to know Christ. I mean, like, wow, this is amazing, okay? This can happen in your life. It may not look like a bus in New York, but... You know, I can tell you right now, when God tells you to speak, it always seems like to me, feels like a little bit angst. You know, this person, how are they going to receive me? What is this going to feel like? All right, so my next slide here is, do you believe that you are strong and courageous? Now, I'm going to just say the word to you. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you. Let that sink in a minute. This is not optional. He said, be, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Jesus is selling, telling you, be strong and courageous. Not optional. Just in case you thought it was optional, it's not. It's a command. Now, think, put this in context. The Jews are in the desert, and Jesus says, go into the promised land. The word of God is speaking through Moses. Go into the promised land. And they're going like, uh-uh. No. Those are some big people in there. Okay? Some of us have wandered in the desert too long. I've wandered in the desert sometimes too long. And God is saying, will you trust in me? Okay? I want you to enter in. I think this is every single day. He says, do you want to enter into the promised land? First of all, you get to choose what you believe. Do you believe I'm calling you into the promised land? Do you believe that my calling you is going to be a blessing for you? Okay? And, and, and go back to the, what I said at the beginning where we all want to feel like we're heard and seen and valued. Okay? Well... You might miss that because of your family and upbringing and stuff, and that's kind of a little bit messy in your life. It was and messy in my life. But the second part is, he says, I created you for a purpose. Well, the purpose is ultimately to do God's will in your life, and I'm telling you that when you do that, okay, you're going to get these other needs met. Okay, for me, 
you know, and today, God has called me to go to Africa. By the way, I want you to know, when I started my life out, I was down in Mexico, and I surrendered my life to Christ, and the Lord gave me a vision for communications, and I said, okay, Lord, I'll do that. And I thought that meant I was going to Africa. I mean, really, if you give your life to Christ, he's going to send you in Africa, right? That's at least what I thought. That was my belief. I say, yes, God, he sent me. I say, okay, I'll go to Africa. But then later he goes, no, 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 not Africa. I want you to go to the business world. And I went, well, I'm still going to take the gospel. So that's how that happened. That's how I got into the business world with the gospel. I mean, literally missionary day one, I'm taking the gospel to the business community. You know, and I, so I felt like that God had sent me there and communicated that to me. Um, I'm trying to turn this page. and I'm having a hard time. All right. So, so back to the beliefs, you know. I mean, back to this point here. What I believe is going to govern my actions, you know. And if I... If I'm believing that I'm not smart enough and that I'm not strong enough and, and, and then, gosh, these people might reject me and I got these fears. If I believe that, then that's what's going to happen. You know, but if I believe in the Word of God and His promises, then I can have confidence, you know, to be ob- uh, obedient. Um, the consequences of unbelief, for although they knew God, they did not honor Him or glorify Him as God or give thanks to Him. This is Romans 1, 21-25. It says, um, who they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. So what that meant is, is that they, Satan said, hey, you should be like God if you eat of this tree. And, and, and that is the lie that devil tells all of us every day. Have it your way. Do what you want to do. Do what feels good. That's the lie. Okay? And, and God is telling us, no, 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 no. <laughs> I am the Lord. I want you to surrender to me. Okay? And, but, but if we believe in that lie, then we're going to miss the promised land, and we're going to get, and that verse, by the way, if you keep reading it, it's about devolution. It's not evolution. It's devolution as you just look at how, what happens as you deny acknowledging God and you believe in that lie. And then that, though, believing in that lie, okay, I'm going to do what feels good. I'm going to do what I want to do. No one's going to tell me what to do. You know, well, then those actions of doing what I want to do is not going to produce the stuff that you want. Those, the, we will all reap what we sow. All right, so do you believe in the Word of God? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Now, this is where, where maybe as a child I didn't get that warm fuzzies that I was valued and that I was seen and heard. But he says, hey, if that didn't work out for you, I got you. Seek first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. You hear me? He says, surrender to me. Give me the steering wheel of your life. Give up control. Pursue me. And it says, seek me with all your heart. Okay? Give it all. Lord, I want you. I mean, I, by the way, I didn't even need to preach today if we had all just tuned in to the worship words and what we were singing. Because it's, it was... All of this message is in the songs that we sing every week. David, thank you. Thank quite team. Thank you all for great leading us in worship because this is saturates your mind with this stuff. I'm not telling you, I, do, I always listen to Christian music, but I can tell you this. Every time I get in my car, I put it back on Christian music in case I put it on something else. So I get back in the car, I'm hearing God's word. Saturate your mind with the things of God. But your, your, your needs, the things that you need, will be met as you seek first the kingdom. Okay, so now, you know, for me, I'm going to tell you this story about, um, about Africa. And so there should be the pictures up there. Put those pictures up there, those beautiful ladies. And I'm going to tell you a story. So just leave that up there while I'm talking. So I, I went to a place that I didn't want to go. I went to a place because the man invited me to go. I didn't really like that much. You know, but I was like, okay, okay, okay. So I'm, I'm there doing a two-day workshop, and part of what I do is value-added. So I'm teaching people 
how to value add what they do. And I'm using bananas. Okay, so everybody's selling bananas. You, your market's going to tell you what they're worth. But maybe how do you add value to bananas? Well, maybe you can dry them, make banana chips, dip them in chocolate, a lot of different things. This one lady says, and I, and I said, what about when the bananas are starting to spoil? We've got to sell them all quickly. She said, I make banana bread. And I went, what? Tell me about this. She tells me, I go like, woo, I've got to have some of that. Some banana bread? And she said, I said, can I buy some? She said, I'll make you some. I said, okay. So we kept going. Two days later, I'm like down in Monrovia. They're over an hour away, and I get a phone call from Bill Clinton. Not Bill Clinton. <laughs> Pastor Clinton. His last name is Clinton, not Bill Clinton. Um, <laughs> Now the thing, I don't even know his first name. His name is Pastor Clinton. I get a phone call from Pastor Clinton. He says to me, he says, the girls have a gift for you. And I went, okay. And I said, well, but I won't be back. You know, I'm teaching now. I'll be back. I'll be at a hotel in Monrovia, and y'all can come in. So now it's around 7, 7.30 at night, and they show up with this banana bread. It's about this thick. It's got aluminum foil, and I touch it. It's warm. I mean, I start breaking open. She goes, he's going to eat it right now. And I went, of course I am. I break it open. You know, I grab a piece of it, shove it in my mouth. I go like, now this is, you're talking my love language. This is feeling good. And then I started thinking about what they had to do to bring me this bread. And I was thinking, y'all traveled over an hour to get there. You made it. That costs money. You traveled it to give it. And I was like, can I pay you for it? And she says, Bill, it's a gift. So the girl right there next to me, with a little kind of, you know, with next to the bread, she says, it's a gift. And I was like, okay. Okay, it's a, I'm, I'm just okay. I, I'm, but I, I'm thinking the cost and sacrifice, you know, and I, I'm having a hard time. And I'm just sitting there. I just kind of like, you know, settle down a little bit. And she said, Bill, what, this banana bread is going to be gone in a few days. But what you gave us will last a lifetime. No one's ever taught us business the way you're teaching us. And I just sat there and just went, wow. And in that moment, I heard the scripture say in John, I came to give you life that it might be more abundant. And in that moment, I was like, this is abundant life. When we sacrifice ourselves, when we are obedient to God, not expecting anything in return, but we're just trying to help the people in our life, and then God decides to bring me this massive gift. And so the results, okay, right here, my belief is I believe that God had commanded me to go. And, uh, and that meant sacrifice Obedience, leaving home, money spent, 30 hours on a flight. I mean, a lot of pain in the butt, to be honest with you. And the result is I get abundant life. I get banana bread. <laughs> I, but, I, but I get the heart, the heart of these people. Relationships built, purpose confirmed, lives saved, lives transformed. Okay? And this goes back to what do you believe? The Bible tells us. He says, go unto all the nations and preach the gospel, baptizing him in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, making disciples, teaching them to do all that I've commanded you. So, so the word of God has commanded us all to go and make disciples. Okay, I can tell you this. I understand that that, that right there is really the difference. If y'all will all buy into this and start making disciples, and many of y'all are, I'm humbled that I get to preach today because I just look at what leaders we have in liberty. It's amazing. But I'm here to tell you as well that don't stop. Don't stop. Keep running the race, making disciples, okay? And the, and the end is abundant life, abundant life, abundant life. And as you're leading people and discipling people, okay, you just can't help but them turn around and give you some banana bread. It just happens. Okay? 
And, and, and the funny part about that, when they gave that to me, and I said what I said, and I said, you know, y'all know what this means? And they went, no. I said, I got to come back. <laughs> and I'm dead serious. I mean, I know it's a, kind of a fleshly thing there, but the banana bread was really good. <laughs> it impacted my life. And so, so we all get to choose what we believe, okay? Um, and if you believe that God has a plan for your life, then are you ready to listen and obey? Okay? I mean, just try this on for just a second. Just listen to me. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven? What are you doing about it? What are you doing about it? What, what's going on in your life? Where are you? Are you surrendered? Are you saying, Lord, send me? God, I'll go. You open those doors, I'll go. And you'll be surprised. There's people that you can reach with the gospel that I'll never meet or reach. And there's people I can reach that you can't ever reach. But I'm telling you, he's commanded us to all go. You're going to do it much differently than I will and vice versa. But there's all kinds of people, and we just need to say, Lord, send me. Surrender. So let's end our day by, um, we're going to do this African style. So if I'd like everybody uh, to stand up. I've got one more slide up there that says, do you, do you um, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So there's the, that verse. Um, but what we're going to do right now, the first part of what we're going to do is, um, and this, I, I do this in Africa, okay? So, um, and, I'm, and I'm not sure who here this is for, but this is for somebody. So just, just bear with me. I want you to close your eyes. Okay, and then just repeat these words after me. Just say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. Take control of my life. I give you the steering wheel of my life. Make me the kind of person that you want me to be. Come into my life, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. With your head still bowed and your eyes still closed, if that's the first time you've ever asked that question, just look up and catch mine. Just say, Bill, I just prayed that for the first time and invited Christ into my life. Or somebody online, you know, just look up, catch my eye. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right, so open your eyes, and I am going to lead you in this. So I'm going to say it, and you're going to say it back, but I'll also put it up on the screen. And by the way, just in case you want a copy of this for our forget, um, my wife said, hey, I'm going to put these in the back. So back there, right by the offering plate, is a copy of this. Uh, this is all just the Word of God, and we're just going to confess it out loud. Um, and by the way, this is very, very healthy. It's very healthy to listen to yourself and what we're going to say. So just repeat after me. I am a child of God. I believe God, you have created me for a purpose. I believe that you will meet all my needs if I will seek first the kingdom. I believe that if I acknowledge you in all my ways, you will direct my life. I believe that where you call me, you will provide the resources. I believe that I am strong and courageous. I will not let unbelief stop me anymore. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God and is 